I feel Bye. like doing this, we need to be able to say something pretty funny. Quick. Camping, more like Frampton, comes alive. Remember <laughs> that? <laughs> oh, hello. Hello and welcome. That's right. This is Was It In Good Taste, your podcast for getting drunk, drinking a lot, and occasionally talking about topics that might be topical and or funny, but not so much. So I'm James. Yay. I, I'm Chandler. Oh. And uh, we're the pod bros. No, we're, we're, no, we're the... That does, I don't like that. I, take that the, back. We're the we're, pod guys. We're the, we're the pod people. We're the cast... Compadres, <laughs> we are the funny people on your screen. We if are... you've never seen this before, we talk about stuff and we determine whether or not they are good in taste. And we trick you into thinking that, like, it's personal, it's a personal relationship. Like, we you're here with us, it's a uh, well, they are kind of here with us in spirit. I've in spirit, wow, this guy, ah, this comedian, oh, uh, yeah, I'm James Beery. Yeah, and I'm Chandler Phillips. And uh, what are we talking about today, James? Oh, fuck. I completely forgot that we do that. We talk about topics. We do talk we about We haven't done topic, that in so long. That are topical. No, we're talking about camping. Or more so, you're going to teach me about camping. Because wait, wait, you... wait. Am I teaching you about camping or am I teaching you about camp? I, you're, te- you're teaching me about camping. Okay. Well, then I have an entire boudoir that is going to need to be stored until a further or a, a later date because I I actually I it's only recently that I found out how to define camp. Oh. But um you oh you got to you got to define that for us. Oh, we did did we do a whole episode about we did a whole episode about camp. That's what it was. Okay, Cor- that's corporate the, or camp. Right. That because, you can find everywhere. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Yeah, while that, we look at each other and not you—that's that's a really good way of finding other episodes—is to like, comment, subscribe. But yeah, that was when we talked about what camp is yes. like in a sense of like it's kitschy, but it's also but like that's niche. not even. I love how and, the definition of a word is just like a strange other word. Yeah, it's like ooh, what's camp? And it's like it's kitschy. What's kitschy? Oh well, obviously, you know what kitschy is. You know, <laughs> you don't know what kitsch. <laughs> you don't is. understand kitsch. Well, then maybe you understand avant garde. Yeah, it's avant. It's avant because you know at some point you're gonna hit a phrase that like they're gonna be too embarrassed to not admit they don't understand. Mm. Like obviously they're like you know. either that or you hit a phrase that ends up being an eventual dog whistle. Ooh, I love that. And so like it turns from like avant garde to All Saints Lorraine, and then it's like. Uh, then, it's, then it's Keish Lorraine. Yeah, and then it's. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with this one. <laughs> I would. I wouldn't go any further. There. I'm gonna stop here. I would. Anyway, I would go any further. About camping. We're not. We're, we're not going too hard into Camp, the KKK. Camping. This is the. Uh, Can I say am for or against? <laughs> are you for or against camping? I don't know. Really, really. But I'm going camping. When. Can I, I don't come? know. Can I come? Yes. Okay. Get the hike though. That's fine. I like. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh. I like a good camping. Hike. Hurt. Um, I've actually never gone like hiking camping. I've only ever gone to like where you drive to a campsite and then like there's a designated rental area. So that's like sleeping. Sleeping outside on the floor. In not your house. On, not on the floor because it's outside. <laughs> it's like sleeping in your black your your backyard. Nope. That your black yard. Well, no, because there's a bunch of white people around you. <laughs> that's that's so fucking weird. That's like the idea of wanting to go to a place to sleep outside. It's like cosplaying being homeless for a little bit. Oh, white people love cosplaying homelessness. We just love cosplaying in general, but especially we love cosplaying the underprivileged. God, I just, wow, I just, I love that. But there's something really alluring about camping because, so, one, like these glasses, which are meant for some kind of Turkish coffee or something. 
But yeah, you would not take these camping. They're made of glass, and they, they have, have this little uh, this handle on it. Glasses that are shaped like this that are not made of glass, but they're shaped just like this. Usually they're made of tin. And they're made of like tin and shit. But obviously there's like coated on the inside so you don't die of tin poisoning. Um, That's a tin. But <laughs> I I like just like the aesthetic of like, you know, oh God, I'm such an Instagram boy. Mugs like, and camping You know, like together. Like they go like camping, but it's like aesthetic. Like you pull out a pot and you have your AeroPress and your pre-grinded coffee and like you're making like you make a a craft cake or something in like a pan on the thing and then you grab like it's like the Instagram reel would be us camping and then like the glass hitting next to the fire and the whiskey going into the glass and like the syrup and then like roughly pe- snipping off a, a little bit of the peel and just throw it in there, you know, doing a little of this. And then maybe getting some of the sloshy, the sloshy. Uh, yeah, it's just a tap. Cooler, the cool, the cooler, cooler water. Ice. Yeah, cooler. And maybe ice. it's got some sticks and dirt in it, yeah. but that's fine. But like, yeah, camping. whatever. You know, the whiskey kills the drink. Right. I'm gonna tell you the spirit of camping. We would have pre-made these old fashions in a plastic bottle that we had repurposed, uh, swished it up a little bit, and then just poured that into whatever cup was available. Oh, that's that's the spirit of camping. But I'm delicate, and I just wanted like I wanted to, there's these so glasses. Many, there's so many different levels of camping because like my version of camping is way more decadent and luxurious than like my dad's version of camping and his dad's version of camping. And there's like I feel like every generation we've gone, we've get f- further and further from what the previous generation thought. I mean. What, Cause like camping's all about roughing it. You can get right? a Jackery, man. You can get a Jackery. Throw that shit into the back of your truck. It's a big fucking battery that has like regular outlets on it that could like a run at your house for like a few hours in case of a blackout, and like will make camping easy. And it's like not that expensive, and you probably should have one, and you probably would want to have one in your truck anyway. Yeah, it's you know? a good emergency device. Yeah. And then when you're gonna be out in the woods without cell service, because what if something actually happens in the real world while you're you're cosplaying poor people? So you're probably gonna have like you know like your, your computer's gonna be charged because you have. Wait, to check you brought your, a computer with you? You have to check your email. Wait, you're checking your email? You like not while you're camping. But like at night when you're in your fucking, you're in like Wait, Harry so Potter it, tent where it's like, <laughs> it's like bigger. It's like the Doctor Who is bigger on the inside than the outside. And there's like lights. It's like a couch. There's like <laughs> amenities. <laughs> but that's real. And the thing is that you don't think, but you, you need your phone. Because what something happens? Like, I'm not even trying to joke. You know, something happens. You have dog. Lando's amazing. And cre- what if like... So the person taking care of them, they get hurt. They get in an accident, right? They need to reach you. You need to have your phone. You're going to be out there for three days. You need a way to charge your phone. I'm going to be and- honest. Where I've gone camping in the fa- in the past, there wasn't cell service to where I could You could make- fix that. And that's what you probably should do because you have an animal now that you care about. I have an animal, but I also have a significant other who also cares I, for said I would animal. assume that they would be with you. Um, I mean, not really, but like in this fantasy, come on. In this fan, I don't know, man. Because like, in my ideal camping situation, <laughs> no women. <laughs> there, are, there's two. There's two scenarios. Either oh god, either it's me by myself, completely alone in the woods, and I'm communing with nature, and I might spend a decent amount of the time naked. Um. Just because that's how you commune with nature. Or I come a little bit more prepared. Actually, wait, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in a third scenario after this. Come a little bit more prepared and I take said significant other and Lando with me to the, uh, to the campsite. And it's, it's the familial unit that oh. is then. Oh, that's so cute. But um, at that point... I gotta make sure that the uh, that the pup doesn't get like um, adopted by wolves. It'd be pretty, it'd be pretty stressful, actually. I'd, that'd be super stressful. Ooh, ooh, is the third one dicks out? Because like I just feel like the third one it just has no, to be like the first one's dicks out. Oh, the first one's dicks out. My my bad. Sorry, no, the first one is dick, dick out. Dick out. <laughs> it's dick out. It's singular. <laughs> third one. 
That's with the boys. That's dicks out. <laughs> That's dicks out. That's with the dicks. Bo- it's a bachelor party. And uh, someone may end up at the bottom of the river at the end of that one. <laughs> but they'll be having a good time. Am I right? Am I I'm right? Oh, yeah. Well. Um, but yeah. In my camping experience, uh, it's either been I was a child. And so my dad was like, all right. I am taking care of the entire family. It's my responsibility to do all of the things that I have spent countless hours and years to prepare that our house was accommodating enough. And now I have to do that outside. And so uh, it's either like, like super stressful or you bring just enough food to, to make sure that you can survive for however many days you're out there. You bring just enough drugs and alcohol that you can survive while you're out there, and you got can't can't go without drugs. You can't go without uh, some good drugs, and then uh, you just got to make sure that you got shelter, and you have to set it up before you get into the drugs and alcohol. Oh, oh I mean, that's rule number one. <laughs> Once you get to your campsite, hydrate, set up camp, then get into your drugs and alcohol. Drugs, alcohol. Campfire old fashions. And that's when you get to enjoy your campfire old fashions. Because I really do feel like, you talk about the luxury of camping. Like, I do feel like if we went camping, like, I'm weird. Like, I'm like, give me the dirt cheapest whiskey. I'll do it. Like, give me just like a cooler with some loop. Like, bar- it's like barely warm and mm-hmm. some like Modelo. Because mm-hmm. like, it's still a little cold though. The Modelo's still cold. But barely, it's like the end. And it's just kind of floating in what yeah, used yeah, to be yeah, ice. Yeah, yeah. So like you're right there. Like it's almost a little too warm, but it's not. Yeah. You know. But I also I also would probably have an orange with me, like a little thing of bitters. Well you gotta have something to stave off the scurvy. Yeah, like you know, it like fucking like the whiskey. <laughs> and then probably a little thing of simple syrup. Because I know I'm making old fashions. <laughs> but I don't think you'd bring a simple syrup. You'd probably bring like something that's multi purpose because you can make griddle cakes. I probably just make syrup. I probably just bring regular syrup. You bring regular syrup and just use that because it's a sugar. It'd be mapley. Exactly. And the more mapley it is, the more kind of woodsy and vibey it is. Because I, I feel like the woodsiness is like it, like you ever like tasted bark? It's a little spiced. Yeah, it's a little spicy, which is interesting because huh. I have used, I tasted bark. I have gnawed on plenty of trees I used in my day. The Boulevard uh, bitters by Bitter Cube. Oh. And those are different than the other ones we've used. That one is more spiced. It has dried prune juice in it. Hmm. But I did that because I thought that it would need something earthy. And earthy to me sounded like, like you know, like prune Prunes. juice. There's like some spice in there. Yeah. And I feel like that's that's going on that same vein. You know what I mean? Like Okay, it vibes. Like It sparkles, it shines. It shines. And uh, ice that's barely... I mean, this is oh, there's oh, that's a, there's oh, that's a, that, I'm not gonna lie, that's a lot of diluted. That's a lot of that is di diluted. That is a di, lot di diluted diluted. Oh, diluted. These glasses are not so fucking delicate. Man, I'm the I would fucking put these in my. I would have so many bags. How many bags would you have? I make a good old fashioned. Damn. Even with the diluted ice. That's a good bout. Fuck. I, okay. We must give credit where credit is due. I mean, because I think also the, the ice, like, you kind of want it to melt into the old fashioned anyway. That's the, right. So, there. Yeah. But the whiskey itself. Oh. So, we're going to do a long thing about campfire. Oh, we, we, we're going to. We're going to. I love it so but, much. But, like, campfire being a mix of rye. Scotch. Uh, scotch. And bourbon. And bourbon. This is High West Campfire. It's been, as far as we know, discontinued. And so anytime we've been able to find a bottle, it's been marked up at least $50 from its initial price. You managed to find one hiding out on a shelf. Just at, like, literally at eye cost. level. Not at, behind, not behind. Like, at eye level. Literally at just, like, sitting in front of some bottles of the bourbon. That's, oh, you found an Easter egg. I did. You found a relic. Yeah. Wow. There have been a few places when I go back to uh, to Sacramento, and they have- That's Sacramento for people who aren't fucking losers oh. on the West Coast. 
I don't even think they say it there. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, just, you think? that's just me being being a silly little scamp. Um, <laughs> they they have it at cost, and I've been meaning to get it, but every time I've gone back, I've had to had to use carry ons, and I couldn't check it. I couldn't check it through luggage. It's been a whole uh, ordeal. How come? I would have sent you the money to check a whole bag. I mean. Like, if you need to check a bag, you don't need to check one? Is that what it is? You go not needing to check one? Mm -hmm. And you're not really a bring-back-stuff kind of guy. Exactly. I go there with a carry-on, and I'm not trying to trying to carry more bags. If you want to bring back a bunch of stuff, I'll help you pay for a carry-on. You know what? We should, we should just order it, like, online and have them mail it to us. Because I think that's probably a doable thing, right? <laughs> I, you know, I like we're like, ooh, let's let's fly across let's, the country to. What if I just bought it? Physically pick it up? Yeah. <sighs> Am I dumb? Am I just a dumb person? Like, Am I dumb? I don't know. Am I stupid? If there's one thing I know, though, it's camping. Is it? Actually, oh. not really. I was in <laughs> Cub Scouts for four years, and um. Then I was in Weeblos. Yeah. Excuse me? That's the that's the term for like you're not yet a boy scout, but you've evolved. It's our charmeleon. Isn't there wait, isn't of, there something before isn't Cub Scout? Yeah, so it's ch your Charmander, your Bulbasaur, your Squirtle. What? Is Cub Scout. I like how you went Charmander bo bo Those are three different why why would why wouldn't it be one Pokemon evolving? No, I'm just saying that's that's the first evolution. That's the that's but those the are three different one. Pokemon. You that's the said. starter. You just said the three different starters. Yeah, that's your. So then your next step would be Weeblow. The, your next step would be an evolution of the Pokemon. Yeah. So then it would be so your be, Charmeleon. There should your be Charmander. Your Ivysaur. Ivysaur. What Ivysaur? Is a, that's a your <laughs> Wartortle. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you're fucking with me on purpose. Look, I'm just I'm just giving all three starters in case any of and our just listeners throwing, and just mix just throwing in any of them. They're all the same starter. <laughs> that is obviously not true. Depending on what game you play, so I'm, I'm sorry. They're all the same. Which so, Pokemon do you, would you bring with you to go camping? That's a really good question. Uh, Ivysaur. So you can. So yeah, a f fuck a frog. Wait, no, I'm not <laughs> fucking a Pokemon. <laughs> what? <laughs> that making that make it clear? It was bring the Pokemon camping to have sex with it. Obviously. Uh, well, in that case, Gordorvor, Togepi. I mean, what? No. <laughs> what? Oh, what that's... are we talking about? Um, so yes, your knowledge of camping, you being a wee a wee below a wee below. Do you know what it stands for? <laughs> I do, please. What is we it? be loyal scouts. We blows. <sighs> uh, and then I didn't, I didn't evolve. I didn't get the uh, whatever gemstone it was to evolve into a full, full fledged boy scout. And then after that is the Aloha region, and that's a uh, eagle scout, and that's for if you don't have sex, <laughs> like ever. It's it's. It's if you are a group of aliens that sneak in people's heads, so you created an organization that's so boring and so lame that anybody who's a part of it could be not even under any kind of guise of suspicion because obviously it is it is so <laughs> milk toast so boring that it can't possibly be threatening. Uh, yeah, anyway, so my experience with Cub Scouts. Actually, very progressive. Our Cub Scout leader um, was uh, one of the kids in the group's mom, and uh, she made sure that we got through the handbook and did all the lessons and stuff. I mainly just stayed with it until I got the pocket knife, and I learned how to start fires. And you didn't get to learn that until right before Boy Scouts. And I was like, all right, fuck yeah. Now, now I learned the essential life lessons. I just so happened how to learn how to do community service and how to uh, build a shelter, like a like a quick and easy um, 
what's it like a like a V trunk shelter you get a branch right and you see a tree that's got like a notch in it and you put the branch in the notch and then you get a bunch of other branches and you put it on top and then boom you can sleep in that it doesn't sound that comfortable but it's practical well that's why you got um a bunch of foliage and leaves and stuff and you put that on the bottom or like underneath it and so you got like a little matted oh. pad of uh of leaves why would you do that to children it makes them tough. I, I feel like builds them for <laughs> tough. Um, whenever we went on like uh, what is it pack outings? I think that because it was like because <laughs> it was like your you had your your troop, and then I think your pack number. Which the whole numbering system was weird. I thought I thought that part. <laughs> you 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 were you were in the fucking troop like this is this is bringing back trauma. <laughs> I was just like, can, there were so many times my where we grandmother were like, told me stories. <laughs> <laughs> like I I know as soon as they start numbering us off, things are bad. Um, usually when they put us in camps, anyway. <laughs> Uh, it was a lot more fun Wrong one. than I expected it to be, but also not as fun as I wanted it to be. Because, well, here's the deal. My dad, I grew up, my dad had um, a group of guys, like um, his, his co-workers that he would go on like man camp with. And <laughs> I would hear story. They They'd go to the Indian Valley Reservoir, which... I don't know if you know about the drought in California, but that doesn't really exist anymore. <laughs> um, it's, what? There's no water in California? It's Well, now it's more of like the uh, Indian Valley puddle. And so they have since relocated. And all the guys that he goes with uh, are also like old men. Uh, <laughs> sorry, dad. Um, but it started with uh, my dad's friend, Rick. Now, his dad, Richard. Richard started this Indian Valley trip, and it would be um, him and a group of buddies that he went to Vietnam with would just go fishing. Nam. They they were in Nam. Going and fishing. I can't remember if it was Nam or Korea. but Oh, <laughs> I like how the Korea... <laughs> that's a different era. And you're it's, right. It's a different era. It, it sound that's like that's different. That's very interesting. Um, I can't quite remember, but anyway, so Richard and his buddies would go fishing and they'd do man camp where they got just their their trucks to to put the boat in the water and then they would have their tent and one cooler would be for food, dried meats, bread, peanut butter, the essentials, their rations essentially, and then another cooler that was just alcohol. And so I've I've grown up hearing stories of like, well, going to Indian Valley for a week, and then I just don't hear from my dad for a week and a half or so because I know that he's up at a lake just getting shit-faced with his friends. Hey, Chandler, Chandler, where's your dad? Fishing. Fishing. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing was... Uh, my dad only joined because, you know, Richard's son, Rick, when he turned 16, that was his, like, coming of age. That was his, his, his ritual, or, or so to speak. Was once he was 16, he could go to Indian Valley with, with his dad. And uh, eventually it turned into, like, Rick um, became friends with my dad. And so... Uh, my dad was invited to go with the uh, the party to Indian Valley, and then over time, um, one of the other uh, one of other Rick's friends, his sons came of age, and so they were invited to go to Indian Valley and do man camp. And uh, I never got to go to Indian Valley. Mm. By the time I came of age, the the reservoir was a puddle, and instead they changed locations to Clear Lake, which um, 
is actually kind of a ironic name for the lake because it is clear, like super clear, 50% of the time, but it's so clear that the invasive species of a hydrilla, which is like an algae type thing, uh, ends up clouding the lake so much that it is the uh, most turbulent or like it looks like it looks like split pea soup by the time you get there in like May. But in March, shit's clear as a motherfucker. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, this I guy di- over here, I digress. You haven't had a chance to go to either one of your birthrights. I I missed both of my birthrights. That's I didn't get the the bar mitzvah. And I didn't get man camp, and so you know what I did instead. You were oh my god, you were you ate you ate tofu. <laughs> Worse. And wore a dress. I killed a pig and ate it raw. No, that's how you get trichitis. <laughs> um, trichinosis. Trichinosis. That's what it is. I knew it was one of the ones with the. Looks like someone's up on his serve safe. <laughs> well, you know it. No, I didn't get either of these. I did eventually go to Clear Lake with my dad, and I did go on the fishing trip, and I did catch probably one of the biggest fish I've ever caught in my life. How big Bell. was it? It was a twenty-inch bass. Woo! It was it was a hog. Um, that fish had a family. Oh, I threw it back. It's fine. It's still alive. Where was you at, Jonathan? I, 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 I got just, caught. I, I got I caught. Got, <laughs> I was in. I don't uh, see nothing on your face. I was in Atlantic City. <laughs> they got new lures. I pro- they get new lures. They don't show up on your face. You nah, was they one- just like they just like suck onto your face, like uh, <laughs> and they leave lipstick. You were on with you. that bottom feeder again, weren't you? It was a catfish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that one was silly. God. We talk in a way that I feel like people in real life just should not talk. Oh, definitely. Because we talk like this off the podcast, which I think people don't understand. Is like in real life we'll be talking and we'll cut away mm-hmm. to a to a joke. This is why people hate men. Honestly, I also would hate men. Mm-hmm. They think they're funny. Oh, they have podcasts, but I think we're hilarious. <sighs> anyway, so my coming of age, I didn't get to go to man camp. I didn't get to be hoisted on a chair or do a Huff Torah. Which for the people who aren't at, what, what is a Huff Torah? Fuck if I know. I didn't do Hebrew school. Uh, <laughs> instead, I decided that when I turned 18, I, uh, I'd been doing a lot of reading. I had this book that was called Giving Voice to Bear. And it was basically a collection of indigenous and tribal traditions across the world, um, primarily focused in like native North American, but also included some uh, Siberian, Nordic, and even uh, Balkan traditions that just regard um, the way bear mythology, or like the way the imagery of the animal, the bear, is regarded in uh, different religions. I've heard about the Balkans before, yeah. Yeah, they are. You're it's familiar. It's a place that exists. Yes. yes. <laughs> ah, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I'm caught up. Yes. And so I thought, all right, I kind of like the whole philosophy of what bears are about. You know, they they eat what they can, they sleep when they can, and uh, they kind of meander through the woods. Fuck, bears are cool. Bears are cool as fuck. They're fucking cool. Man. I didn't know you that were was, chill like dude, that. that was, that was my like fucking shit, dude. I'm like, bears are chill as fuck, dude. Um, so I kind of did like a synthesized version of what all of these coming coming of age rituals regarding bears and stuff were in this book, and uh, decided to take my car out to the uh, Sacramento Delta, which um, is a bit is a ways away. It was probably about two and a half hours, three hours away from. Uh, from where I was living at the time and pitched a tent by myself, brought a little food. This was on December 30, 30th of 20, let's say 2015, December 30th, 2015. And uh, I did. You had this com- coming of age in 2015. You had yeah. your coming of age in 2015. Okay. Well, I also did it like, 
many of years too late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Like all the other coming of age things were like, I should have been 13. I should have been 16. And I was like, ah, we'll put that off. We'll put. Th um, and so I went out, I brought some mind altering substances and enough food to sustain me for at least three days, even though I was only going to be there like a day and a half to two days. Um, it was the coldest day of the year, and the winds were a-whistling. And so I pull up to... I just went to a camping site and, uh, you know, paid my little thing. It was a national park or a state park. Um, set up my car, set up my tent, set up my, my little campsite. That's, that's the tent pole going through the... <laughs> That's lighting the mask. Oh, that's a good one. Um, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> that was me eating the mind altering substances. <laughs> and then <laughs> that's me fishing. Um, and then I did a little fishing. Didn't catch anything, which honestly I think is probably better because <laughs> like I just wanted to have I just wanted to hold the fishing rod. I didn't want to actually catch anything because, like, then I'd have to deal with, like, oh, no, what if I hooked it through, like, its eye or something? What if I what if I accidentally hurt this? It's almost like it's alive and you shouldn't be. I'm All fish are bastards. Listen. Listen. A what? I don't oh, think you could say that one. A fat. AFAB? Yeah. Oh, okay, this is side people at births, I guess. <laughs> In this context, context is clue. Cool. Key. Context is key. All, right this moment, all my fish fishes. are bastards. AFAB. Let me tell you this. If a fish could, it would gulp you down in a second. A fish? Oh my God. All fish are the same. All fish are the same. My mother told me a fish moved in the next door, and then the property values went down. My mama told me as soon as I seen a fish, I knew there was a highway coming through my, my neighborhood. Wow. That's real deep. That, that's that's reflecting on the fact that often when you would see white people come into the neighborhoods, they, they decided to like, oh, hey, let's just pile through any any poor neighborhoods. Let's just, just like build a highway through it. See, I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga's woke. Um, no, but then, okay, so then it got real cold and it got real dark and I got real fucking trippy visuals and i started staring at constellations and shit started connecting and like i saw i saw some things in the stars that were like simba yes yes <laughs> it's like remember who you are remember was, who you are oh fuck um then my face got chapped not just my lips got chapped but my face like cheeks forehead got chapped oh, and i was like oh, i am oh, severely oh, uh cold right now so i went into my tent and i got all bundled up and i was like that's why i was so uncomfortable it's in the middle of winter i'm trying to identify with a bear i'm not hibernating i need to be in a den i need to be all cozy as shit <laughs> And so I got super cozy and like read a little bit of my bear book and I had a lantern. And uh, at one point I got real paranoid that um, some, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, um, potatoes. Know, mouse, potatoes. No, like rats. Beans, greens, voles. No, not voles. The ones that live next to a river. Muskrats. Muskrats. I was convinced for about an hour it felt like an hour. It was probably about 15 minutes. Uh, I was convinced that muskrats were going to somehow climb their way into my tent while I was sleeping and chew off my face. That does not sound like a good time. No, but it's it was like a confrontation of all these insecurities and stuff. Because at, at no point was I like, oh, no, bears or, oh, no, mountain lions or any of the other feasible, like, actual predators. I wasn't afraid of predators that would be in the area. I was afraid you of were like, muskrats. You were like, this is an allegory for my insecurity. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> This is an allegory for, for all the wrongs I've ever done it's, and all the times I've never lived up. 
all the little people I've stepped Mama, on. <laughs> I killed a man. <laughs> Put a hook against his head. Pulled the line, and now it's anyway. Um, eventually found my peace. Found centered myself. Found comfort. Um, managed to fall asleep, and then the next morning, you know, you get that kind of afterglow, like that, like <laughs> ooh, like you, like you weathered a storm, yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. vibe, or like things are gonna be better today. The feeling that I'm sure Noah had as soon as he opened the doors and the dove came back, kind of, kind of vibe. Yeah, it's like ooh, and I unzipped the tent, and the sun was rising, and I looked out upon the delta, and I was like, fuck. Nice warm breeze, dewy breeze. Which was over. It was over. The year was over. I am a changed person after this camping trip. And uh, that was the most ethereal camping experience I had. Um, I did a little bit more fishing, made myself some breakfast, had some coffee, packed up my stuff, made sure not to leave any trash. That's the biggest thing. If you ever go camping, do not leave any trash. Number one rule of camping is leave the campsite looking prettier and more nat naturally pristine than how you found it. And of course, the unwritten rule is only you can prevent forest fires, which is not a fucking joke. Because only combine you. that with the trash, which yeah. is like kind of the things that contribute to forest fires. So like, don't be assholes. And you know, if you can... Just rake the forests. Yeah. Just rake the forests. Rake the forests. But carefully. <laughs> making sure to maintain the habitats of all the the natural predators and victims? I forgot the word. They're, they're called prey. <laughs> no, I love no, no I just <laughs> like it. <laughs> God damn, that's the vegan in you. It's like, <laughs> you, know, you know, you got predators. And, and then you have victims, survivors. <laughs> They're survivors. Tell me your story. Tweet, 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 tweet. tweet. It was a snake. It, <laughs> how dare he? In <laughs> your burrow, Without your consent. Uh, see, I feel like the wrong audience will be like, "Yeah, haha, they make fun of consent. Never make fun of consent." That's assuming we have the wrong audience, and we know we have the right audience. Except for you, Steve. But fuck Steve. With or without consent? Ooh. Um, but that was my favorite camping experience. I've also gone camping a couple other times before with, uh, with some friends and with family. Um, I did one that was a bit of a hike. It, it wasn't too far. It was probably about a mile hike from the car. But we managed to bring some like little rolling coolers and um, it was fairly flat, so it wasn't too bad. I haven't ever gone on like a like a backpacking camping trip, and honestly, that seems a bit much for me. I don't need to go that I wanna, hard. I'm trying to get to. I mean, we need to do that this summer. The problem is definitely have to make an investment because no matter how much I want to tough it out, I, if push comes to shove, if you give me an axe, I can hack down a tree. Buddy, but you're but, a technophile. Like, are you going to be able to fall asleep without I mean, electronics? One hundred percent. What I do when I when I go to sleep is I take on my phones and shit. I turn them off and put them away. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I honestly would like I can chop down a tree. Oh, it's easy to take a life. Like if I had an axe, <laughs> <laughs> that that was fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking tree, bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> you tree fucker. Uh <laughs> Sorry. Oh my no trees allowed. Um <laughs> uh birches only. Uh, <laughs> bushes, know, get over yourself. If I was uh if I was like in an emergency and I had an axe, I could chop down a tree. But if I didn't have an axe, I am not I don't I can't like find a rock and beat it against another rock until it's roughly axe shaped and like poke a hole in it or whatever. I, I can't do that. So wait. So I need to come with an ax. So what you're and saying And because is if I break my up, foot. You need to level up your craft. <laughs> I need to level my crafting. If I break my fucking foot, I can't get, listen, okay, I've splinted somebody before, but if I break my leg, I cannot splint myself, <laughs> okay? And I would do a bad jab about it. Can I be honest? Her leg is kind of crooked, so. 
I didn't do that great a job. Ew. So like, I need to have my phone on me because I'm not trying to die from breaking my fucking femur. Okay, I'll, I'll take the, what I'll, kind of what kind of camping are you doing where you're breaking your whole well, fucking I'm hiking, feet? right? No. And I'm not going hard hiking, but like if I twist and sprain my ankle and I'm with people, then like they can help me. It's not going to be that steep. It's not it's not significant like a significant path. Right. But like if I'm by myself, like I I know me. I like I just get like a little anxious. I want to go outside, you know. And then like I I, I trip and I twist my ankle, right? Mm-hmm. Uh. These motherfuckers better have phones because one, I don't want to have the only phone, so I have to pay for a fucking like transcontinental helicopter. Like you know, you have to have phones because it's unsafe to not have phones. So thus, if you go camping now, you have to have phones with you, That's and you kinda... also have to have like you can have your fun food, like you can have your MREs, but then like your car literally has outlets. And probably has like a built-in <laughs> microwave or some shit. So you, you might have as a well built-in microwave. <laughs> so you might as well in the built-in fridge and you're like this fucking. You know what I mean? Like, like you. Why would you not bring? Like, yeah, we're gonna go hunting. Also, bring Kansas Chef Bar ID. Oh wait, 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 wait. No, okay. I want to preface that man camp was never about eating what you catch. You. I've never gone camping to where you eat what you catch. <laughs> I have only ever gone camping to where if you go fishing, it's catch and release, and I don't go hunting. That's just, I don't know. I'm, Mamby Bambi. I'm not about hunting. I'm not about bringing guns to a campsite. I'm about bringing too much booze to a campsite. Oh, to, that's because that's, that's fun. I am, I am, uh, my booze to gun ratio, lot more booze. Yeah. Very little gun. And it's so much booze that like, because like, if it's like 16 booze to one gun, not, maybe not a good ratio. But like, I don't know, 100 to one, like. That's even a worse ratio. No, like 100, like, like 100 cans to one gun. Oh, like, okay. Because you, you, you can't even pick it up. Uh, at that point. You know, like at that point. <laughs> How are you aiming? Yeah, like, like in your head, you're like fucking sniping the libs, you know. And really, <laughs> you're just like, in real life, reality, you're just like, Ugh. shoot yourself in the foot. I'm, I'm making a, I'm holding like a gun because I felt like I, I looked like I was <laughs> doing like. Wait, early... does it, does that have a stock on it? Do you have like a, <laughs> yeah. Like a foregrip? I got a bump stock and everything. Though. Like, yeah, listen. damn. <laughs> oh, this man uh, came uh, to do some hunting. What movie's out today? <laughs> That's not fucking funny, man. Wait, what movie is out today? Batman. Batman. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh. Oh. Like, just has imagine. It, just has imagine. Colorado been through enough? Just imagine, like, like, like I see. Oh fuck, man! The demographics great. Seventy percent women. That's what it says. It only says women and men, okay? And it says women, men, non-binary. Those are the three. Non-binary says four percent. Women seventy percent. For okay. Batman? No, for the podcast. This podcast. Oh, oh, oh. And, oh. But imagine that of that number, one person was in the theater on Aurora, Colorado. On that day, and they listen to this podcast. Well, and they survived, and they and they have to hear me make a crude make, joke, make a really bad joke. Damn, maybe you should. <laughs> maybe maybe we should just go camping and not come back. I maybe mean, we should go. <laughs> Would you? So I feel like there's a weird, um, not cross section, a weird connection with like doomsday preppers right Mm -hmm. and campers because like well because either way they both cheat at call of duty have you seen last of us the the the, the new show or whatever i have not seen last of us and only because i have the game but i had never played the game and so in my head i'm like it's like when you get a book for a movie that came out Trust me, watch the watch the show. It won't really spoil because there's 
Just, just whatever. I'm fuck not going to play the game either. Oh, okay, that's so the then why do you just watch the fucking show? <laughs> because I want to lie to myself. That's why. But like in all these zombie TV shows, the people who really survive, like it's always like it's either a bunch of people who was a ragtag group who like were in a school and they barricaded the school. They cleared out the school. And now they made a little community inside the school and they slowly like that, push out the perimeter, uh -huh. you know, like, well, ask your question now. I'm curious. Oh, when in the height of like the walking dead and when every piece of media was like zombie media, did you at any point, like you and maybe your friends kind of have a, uh, I have a plan a, a plan, an emergency scenario, no, emergency scenario which is always for people to meet here. Your because house. Because there's a few things. One, my proximity to mm. all the trains. And Do you think the trains are still going to be running? No, no, no. Ah, ah, ah. You see, you're thinking, you're thinking too short term, right? It's not, it's not the apocalypse has been going on for two weeks. This is the minute you're on the train and you see like as your train pulls out the station and then you, you see start, you see no no you see a bunch of cops like subduing like some guy you know who like is acting really erratically you know you see that and like you know using the movies like you're like on your iPhone or whatever but you need to see that shit because when you see that shit you come here bro that's just bath salts no you got to like you know you can't be have your Shaun of the dead moment where, like you're walking down the street and people are just like turning into zombies the minute you see the minute that, like, you hear on the news, uh, you know, uh, her to, I found the sound out rather. Today in the news, a weird virus from a plant from Costa Rica seems to be finding its way into America. We're having a meeting here, okay, because there's bars in all the windows, right? Bro, COVID it's, happened. Like, and, and guess what? Did the people... day before, the day before, the city shut down. You were in my house. My ex was in my house. My sister was in my house. Was that really? That, that was literally the day. And I stood at the table. I was in the table. And I literally was like, oh, my God. Wow. Everything's going to be really no, fucked up. Right. And, oh, I, shit. and I said, I literally said, everything's going to get fucked up. Do you, sh do you manipula I manipulate me into a safety precaution situation? <laughs> <laughs> I was literally so freaking out. And I literally, and I was just like. This is like going to be super terrible and, and everything's going to fall apart and we're all going to be fucking stuck and we're going to like, people are going to fucking die. And everyone was like, no, it's okay. It's okay. And I was like, no, 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 it's not going to be okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, but I understood kind of at like the level of what like it was at. You know what I mean? Hmm. So like, it's not like Russian troops are dropping out the, cause then we got to stay here. Right. You know, if, that if the if it if the zombies start, right? Because like Honestly, I'm not kind of funny. I mean, not funny, funny, but it'd be kind of funny to see someone try to attempt a land invasion of the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'm not gonna lie, because at first, like at first, when they're dropping in Ohio, like they'll find like a, they're like you know they're trying to pick a strategically advantageous place, so they drop down where there's no people, right? And so they take over like a small town, but not everybody's on alert. The minute. Like motherfuckers, right. the lights is in the sky. Oh, yeehaw, my motherfucking cone. Like, okay, you wanna you wanna land invade a country whose primary social issue is gun control. Gun control. And a lot of the people who don't like the gun control also have guns. Because and you're we're gonna all fucking, paranoid and have anxiety. Revy Watchman ending, you think that like, you know, in reality, I feel like why the like it's always like the camper who went like the person who's like prepared because the person who camps is the prepared person because you camp for fun but if you're like a camper and you have more than just the camp the, the tent that you go to like the fairgrounds with yeah then you're prepared you're the person who has at least two weeks of water in your house or better yet you got the little the thing that like is a water purifier yes Yes, and then you can like put the straw in the water. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a mix of people because you're gonna have your dra your drag queen story hour. You think you fucking come into America? Listen, like, fuck America. <laughs> you want to talk about a survivors? Lot of, a lot of shit about America. Like ah, oh, fuck. Like listen, you know, listen. Okay, <laughs> maybe like you know, fuck America. But also, like if you try 
to like fly and people are like oh well this is not true you're gonna see fucking trans kids right next to ted cruz and you're gonna think and people like somebody's like well i can't imagine why that would happen you don't understand that like the meritocracy fucking bullshit is like ingrained in all of us and that switch is like the manchurian kid that shit can like a like a switch and if you come in on if you're coming onto this soil suddenly it's my soil it's, this is our soil <laughs> like we're all for like getting rid of borders and all that but freedom ain't free brother click clack <laughs> that's a fucking that's a fucking i i love that shit yeah <laughs> like you know you cannot fuck with us and i love i love the idea of just like you know part of the fun time in america there's a huge culture around doing things like camping and like rock climbing and stuff like that so it's like for fun for fun people fucking shoot guns do like five mile terrain, multi terrain marathons. Like you want to talk about Vietnam? I think it's like trauma or some shit. You come into the, you're gonna be like, yeah, we we snuck into cornfields and motherfucking moms do, who do be doing CrossFit are gonna be like fucking hopping out of the fucking fences and like, like snapping your necks. The bro. fucking uh couple during the BLM protests where they were out there with fucking ARs mm-hmm. just during a peaceful protest. You think? You think if you're coming in unpeaceful, they're going to be responding with that same scowl? That's a fact. It's it's just kind of, it's a beautifully American thing that so many of our traditional pastimes are just violent. <laughs> it's, it's it's wild. And like I know other countries have violent pastimes as well. Like I'm not going to say that like uh, the other major powers or other major global powers don't have some. But I was like, I was commoditized. It's commodified and, 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 and it's glorified. It literally, it's just like, like it's like you like all oh, kids in Ukraine, you know, get guns when they're five, you know, which is why they're doing a good job against Russia. But like kids here are like playing laser tag for like fifteen hours, and you think it's not the same. But like you know, they play so much fucking Fortnite, and they play laser tag, strategize, and shit, and they're and like they're just fucking going. You think you're gonna drop? Like literally, you're gonna go into some kid's house, and a bunch of the kids are gonna die. Yeah. But you're gonna hear some stories about that one kid who's like eight years old, but then he heard like he saved his whole fucking family. He ramboed the fuck out of like because he just 15, started 15, 15 Russian commandos and shit like that. <laughs> like you know, well, you heard about the fucking one kid who like. uh Oh, what was it? When uh, you aggro a boss in uh, World of Warcraft, there was a kid who, like, his family was about to be attacked by, like, a moose or some shit, and he distracted the moose and Mm -hmm. defended it by, like, he's like, oh, yeah, I learned this from a boss battle in World of Warcraft. That's that's some pinnacle America shit. (laughs) Do you think that camping is, like... Like, I feel like camping is a little tacky... It's a little, it's like, it's like, it's a little tacky. It's sometimes I think it's like, especially when people don't take care of the areas they're in, it's not good for the environment. There's a lot of things about camping that I think make it not good, but I think it's still very attractive. My opinion of camping is um, it's an opportunity to commune with nature and the further a way we get as both individuals and a society from our uh, our ability to survive within nature, we kind of have to accommodate. Like, this might be a stretch, but the same way that the Jewish people have had to accommodate their religion Ooh. over generations of, of diasporas. So good, yeah. And... We've come to. I mean, your point, not. Oh, thanks. Not, to, not, not, to, not, not the diaspora. Not the diaspora. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we've had to do so many things. That's like, this is a symbol of mm-hmm. remembering this time. Camping has become a symbol of communing with nature, and admittedly, it's not our nature to commune with. Like, it's not our land. <laughs> I mean, you know, well, I, I gotta say it. It's not our land, you know. But I mean, but if well, it is now. But you know, it wasn't originally. If we're gonna be finders here, keepers, losers weepers. If we're gonna be here, 
in order to respect the nature and the land that we're on, um, I think that it's a healthy ritual. That's that's what it is. It's more of a ritual than it is a uh, hobby or a pastime. And that's kind of how I treat it, at least when I go camping, is I go in with some sort of in- intent of like... Um, cleansing like it's it's there's a sense of like we have to record an episode camping we have to do an episode camping oh while camping yes oh yeah you got a recorder right i got a flute i got this camera i have a portable recorder we could literally record this we could do a campfire at the campfire i feel like that'd be absolutely fucking great god i would love that Oh my god, I love that. Do you do you like starting fires? I do, as long as I have some flint. Yeah. Right. Like and I, I have I get a sense of gratification. Like whenever I'd I'd hang out with my family or friends and we're doing a fire pit or something. There's a sense there's like a personal part of me that's like, I want to start the fire. I always maintain it. I, I'm yeah. the I'm the I'm the I'm the James. Shit. James is James is a good. So like, you know, He's I James, take my time. Lord of the Flames. <laughs> and you take it. I make sure everything is nice. Make I sure make your sure, woods are. Yeah, I make sure I check the wood to make sure none of it's rotten. To make sure that it's just dry. I even make gotta, sure put a little wet wood around the. Like you like you make sure to keep it maintained. Yeah, you you can even put where you want it to be cooler. Put a little. I like damp to put wood. a little bit of. Um, uh, like chemically cured or painted wood on the fire just for the fun pizzazz <laughs> and everyone the, catches a just little the, buzz. Just, you want to tell everybody about our little camping <laughs> experience in your roof? <laughs> you want to tell everybody real quick about the amazing camping experience and the point. Let me tell you a story real quick. Today at work, my coworker like has like Crohn's disease. So like they have like a thing with use the bathroom kind of a lot. Mm. We were walking, they had to pee. It's like, how oh, they go? They go to pee like near a gate. And they're peeing behind some wooden pallets. So, Honestly, some piss-soaked pallets aren't bad. So let's, Piss let's, is the least let's of talk your problems about, when it comes to... Let's talk about when we were on your roof and we were camping a little bit. I wanted to do a little fire pit on my roof. Um, it started with some charcoal briquettes. Oh. Some Kingsford charcoal Instalite. Um, I then was realizing I was running out of charcoal and instead we had some rotting uh some pallets some rotting pallets on the roof and so i grabbed some of those and uh as we were up there i think you might have noted it first where you're like huh this has a <laughs> interesting I mean, smell to it the, the first time i saw you put a wood the wooden pallet on, on the fire i said uh you know i don't think this is great <laughs> and and I think I said we're here for a good time, not a long time. That is exactly what you said. <laughs> there was a point where like the flames started popping and sizzling, and way- they turned green a little bit. Yeah. And then you made burgers. Well, wait, 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 wait. Time out. Pause. Pause. Because it was a couple hours after I had I had put that wood on. And then I had since put it was other. Not even a couple of hours. Okay, maybe an hour. It was like forty minutes. Oh, okay. And me obviously, feel. like the, <laughs> the, the, the it, it was a little bit of what it was still in there. Just a little bit. Just a little. Just a little bit. All the toxic stuff had burned out. <laughs> you made fucking burgers. And you fed it to your fucking girlfriend. Well, and myself. I wouldn't give. I wouldn't give my roommates and my girlfriend something I wouldn't also eat myself. Like force them to give them the burgers. Oh, no. <laughs> That's pretty funny, also. Oh, no, no, like no. they had nothing to do like, with come it. Come on, to eat a burger. Like literally, they just were just like existing. Go for it. Eat it. It's like here's a burger. This is for you. Here's fucking give us poison. money. <laughs> I feel like you killed somebody. Not yet. Give it time. I love that. It's uh, it's about the long game. You know, it's a slow burn. Um. No, we should definitely go camping, though, because if I get my hands on some firewood that isn't uh, chemically treated, Oof. I actually make a pretty good fire. One of my, um, like, uh, what is it, anxiety relief activities as a, as a youth? Lighting fires. Close. Was I would take whatever wood that 
like my dad was doing a lot of tree pruning and stuff and um I would split logs. Um they were never they were never the big ones enough to make like a TikTok following oh. or anything. Oh, they you were, couldn't you couldn't be a little sexy Bradley Thor. You I couldn't c- I couldn't you can't do be it. or the that that you that the woman. I so the problem was the logs I had were long and skinny oh. and not big and round. And oh. so I was always cutting against the grain. Oh, so you couldn't go Ugh. I couldn't just Ugh. 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 Yeah, Ugh. that's good. Good girl. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't get that. Wood. I do TikTok, TikTok. I do really like splitting logs though. Like it makes you feel strong. It does make you feel Especially when you because you can do it with one arm. Cause like oh wait no wait who's doing it with one arm? I've done it with one arm. Just one arm with That'd a be... sledge ba- or like the yeah it was just like a regular. Oh my goodness! I mean it wasn't like a one go, Whew. but I, I literally was like wah, and I was like mm, wah, and then I just like broke it. It was pretty. I was hurting. I was I, went, I did not feel good. <laughs> my whole body felt like I'd been hit. No, what I'd actually do more often than not was I would take a take an axe. And get one or two good like thwacks in because we didn't have the sledge version, like you know where it's got the extra weight. Oh, on the on back, the, yes. The back. Oh, yes, yeah, that's the kind I used. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it didn't. Oh, have it was a little that. tiny one. Uh, not like a tomahawk. Oh, it was just like a straight. It was like it a, was just a straight one. Yeah. It was one oh. that you would go like. So that's for like that's not really for splitting like 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 stumps. That's for like that's for like kind of cutting up the big pieces of. The pre-cut wood that you get. Exactly. <laughs> that come in a bundle in the supermarket. So I'd split up stumps with that. But what I'd do is I'd give one or two thwacks with that. And then I'd get an actual sledgehammer and just do like, you know, the opening scene of Dumbo where it's like five guys just hammer, hammering. Not the, real, not the real racist parts. No, the that's, beginning. Not, that's not the. Fr- Wait. I, I, that part might actually be a little. I don't know. Too. But I know that Dumbo has some. Um, but no, I, it's the one where they're doing the railroad. Yeah. Which again, it might yeah, still yeah, be yeah. a little. It might still be a little racist. Yeah, a, a little. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is John Henry racist? Like, is the whole story? I'm. I racist? here's the thing. I always want to say. I, I. I really just think that like it's the Black American folktale. But now that I think that, because I've never thought about it critically before in my life, it's probably like really racist like it's and, probably rooted in like the reason why he has to beat the machine is like was it johnny racist. applesmith apple seed apple oh fuck it. no apple he smith. makes he makes apple he you know you ever heard granny smith's first here's the story <laughs> <laughs> of her father well granny smith <laughs> was actually married to a confederate um <laughs> oh I'm, it's true Shit. but it's just heritage it's, it's it's heritage. My culture is not your. What kind of people? Costume. What kind of people do you think go camping? What kind of people do I think go camping? What kind of people do you know go camping? Half of me. I know that. <laughs> <sighs> this is this is gonna sound bad, but I think white people. Go camping. I think. What's the other half? Jewish people don't go camping. I thought they were white too, but you know. Well, it depends on the day. It depends on how the markets are doing. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) No, but like, when's the last time you've seen a Jew go camping? To be fair. On purpose. To be fair, again, we don't do well. I, I don't in think camps. I've never gone camping, but I don't think if I go camping, I'd go to somebody and be like, "Hey, everybody, so I'm just curious. What is your religious affiliation or social? Are you a Jew? I, <laughs> I, I don't even know how to listen. Wait, but no. Okay, wait. I'm gonna rewind the question because again, there's different kinds of camping. There's there's glamping. There's glamping. That's where you, that's like, not really camping. That's like you have a heated AC and like you know that's that's like, like you're in a hotel room, but it's technically a yurt. Yeah, 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 yeah. And everything's accommodated, and there's walkways and stuff, I and love there's that, like though. outlets. Hot, yeah, I love that. Then there's RV camping, which is what 
white people with money do. And then there's... So they, they have everything in the RV. It's like they go camping, but like if they need to, they can enter the RV, shower, <sighs> drive off. Or they just stay in the RV and like when they're outside, they just kind of have the overhang oh, going Oh, out. they put a wild thornberries. Gotcha. Yeah, it's more wild thornberries or even just like uh, tailgating. Like gotcha. just, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a real... Because then what's... The, Ooh, that's a good question that I don't know if you'll be able to answer. Oh, I love this. Where's the line between tailgating and camping? I mean, tailgating, it depends on how long you have to be at a place for it to be considered camping. Because I've been to concerts where I've camped out. Yeah. Or like you've been to a fest. Uh, yes. And there's camping at a fest, but I don't think those are camp I feel grounds. Like, I feel like sleeping as part of camping. Sleeping outside Because if is... you go to a campground, put down a tent, hang out for 15 or 5 hours, and then leave, it's not camping. So you go to a festival in a campgrounds, and you're there for 18 hours, but you leave, you didn't camp. But like, if you're tailgating, but you really want to be at the arena because like, you're like, it's like the Super Bowl, and you have like a culture of like tailgating in your city, right? You know? Mm-hmm. And so like, you want to be there because like, you're like there's like a chili contest. It's like it's like a big thing. Right. So you stay the night before. You, and do you your camp st- out. That's camping. But is that you camp out? But is that camping? I feel like that is. It's just like camping is the the, the action. It's not the nature. That's part. Of, ca- well, the I'm nature. Gonna go back, I'm gonna go back to what I previously said as just camping for me has a sense of intention with communing with nature. That's it. That's if you go camping and there's an intent. The in, nature is beaten. In is tent. beating the giant's ass. That's, <laughs> that's nature. That's the nature. Let's go, Pats. Let's go. Wait, wait, Jets or? I said Giants. You said you said beating the giant's ass. Yeah. So. Oh, uh, the football. Uh, are you? So you're Jets or? No, I just the Giants are just gonna lose. Well, that's, it's like it's like just part of the game. It's like oh 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 oh. Oh, 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 just in uh, in civilization. Part of camping you. is respecting nature and coming back to where you actually live and thinking, you know what? This ain't so bad. It allows me to communicate with nature. Camping isn't just an action. It's a camping feeling. is being. Camping is existing. Well, camping is meditative. That's... Mm-hmm. And that's why you have to bring a whole lot of mind-altering substances. But you also need to have Wi-Fi. I don't know. I don't know if you need to have Wi-Fi. I think you just need to have some, uh, some like, chicken nuggies. What if your theoretical daughter, who has type 1 diabetes, right, has an incident, and also the world is going to end, and they're going to be saved... If she could say the N-word. Then I'll find that out <laughs> when I get back from camping. <laughs> I'll, that's Camping is going off grid for just a little bit. It's I'm no longer accountable to the traditional, all, right. all the things. So here's the thing. Do you, so there's a period of time, like when I had, a, like many years ago, when I had a sidekick and I used to pay like, ten dollars a week or something for unlimited internet and like a little bit of texting and calling or there were times where i would always allow my phone to go off because i didn't really and i still don't often like to be engaged with my phone when i'm with people I always try to put my phone face down or away in a different room mm-hmm. do you think that like we need camping because i'll just say that like i think camping for me is superfluous it's extra mainly because I think a lot of the things that we do when we're camping, we can already kind of do. 
You know, like I'm, I'm, I'm like. No, the, that's a good question. Yeah, because okay. I'm like the opposite of the the anti tech people. I'm not a luddite. You know what I mean? But like, I value people. So when I'm with people, I'm like, oh, where's my phone? Because I don't know where it is. When I'm by myself, I always know where my phone is because I'm by myself. You know, when when people are with me, like my phone is not really the center of the attention. Mm-hmm. You know, the show I'm not watching is the center of the attention. Those things are hard for me to even engage in. When I'm with people, like, I don't think I need camping to, like, connect with, like, what's around me, what's under me. The, the, the spirit of Gaia flows through all things. Mother Gaia. Well, to that I say, I don't know if you need camping. I, for me, I don't even Ew. think I need camping. As an individual, As an individual I like camping camping as at least a periodic that it again it's meditative it's contemplative it's like a good shroom trip you don't necessarily need it but if you go in with the best of intentions and you go in in with an intent of wanting something out of it then yeah go for it the hard do part it. is doing it every day. Yeah, you can't do it every day. <laughs> I, mean, I just decided, to, I'm just going to start throwing that into everything. Like, I feel like it sounds like so deep, but like in a kind of shallow way, you know, like, like that, it's like, that's the hard part. You got to do it every day. You got to do it every day. It just sounds so deep, but like. Fuck, dude. I told myself that just like on the walk. It really only, here. I, I'm sorry for like, but only it only sounds deep if like, because you already, it sounds deep because you already know it. You know what I mean? It's Don't not like me, nobody has to tell you. <laughs> like, you know, nobody has to but tell you. But that doesn't apply to camping. Like, but that's, No, no. But camping is different. Camping's different because if you do it every day, then it's not camping. Then it's just living. Then it's just living. <sighs> Donate to your local homeless shelters. And, <laughs> um, oh, at- oh I, I wasn't laughing at that. Yes. Do- D- donate to local not uh, not homeless shelters. Find like a mutual aid fund or something, or that like too. Uh, like find like an, a local organization or something. To I don't know why we're talking about the unhoused right now. You feel guilty, I guess. Hey, that's how we started the show. We're gonna wrap it back around because um, uh, we talked about how camping is essentially people cosplaying as the unhoused. And so, if you ever feel guilty about camping, just donate. You know, fuck it. If you have the privilege to go camping, then you know, pr- try. Oh yeah, make, give fucking money away. What the try fuck? to make uh, living a little easier. Oh for yeah, other because people. you get to not. Yeah, like you get to choose. The- wow, fuck. Yeah, bringing it back around. Wow, wow. This has been so fucking great. This has been. I feel like I had a lot of fun. We should go camping. We should go camping. I wonder if I still have my tent or if my brother has that now. Um. I don't know about your tent, but I have intent to tell these folks about where you can find us, all the places. So what? I'm going to go first this time. Yeah. All right. So you can find me at TikTok at Living Dad Joke. Right. All right. Cause You've been blowing up on TikTok. I've been doing, I've been, I've been having a lot of fun over on the talkity talk. <laughs> um, oh my fucking God. Oh, kill me. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. God damn it. I'm going to get canceled on TikTok again. Oh, no. Um, not that it's ever happened, but I'm going to throw it out there. Uh, Twitter, at what funny friend. Of course, you can always reach the podcast at wasitingoodtaste at gmail.com. Where can they find you, Chandler? Uh, you can find me in and around Brooklyn. I go to a whole lot of mics in the Bushwick area, especially at Easy Lover. You can also find me at Instagram at Chandler Does Jokes. I've Ooh. actually been posting jokes lately. Yes, I and they're pretty been, funny. And I, thank you, I appreciate it. And also, I uh, I guested on another podcast that I'm gonna plug right now. Oh, do it! I love this. Um, this is a friend of mine, uh, Cameron Lindsay's podcast. Everyone's better than me, and uh, I give him a little advice on how to catch mice. Oh, Everyone's Better Than Me by Cameron Lindsay, Uh which honestly is actually, I did see it. It's on Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's where you can find most podcasts. And I'll be honest, it sounded pretty good. It sounded pretty funny. It it was a good time. Until It was almost as good of a time as camping. I was about to say, was that in good taste? Oh, that too. Competitive. I'm, I'm kidding. 
Mm. What's the name of the podcast again? Their podcast. Everyone's better than me. Everyone's better than me. Yeah. Oh, but they know we're better than them. Boom. It's implicit. In we the name. support you. Every everyone's better than me. Pod. You got it, Cameron. Yeah, you you got it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, we should go have some more of that uh, campfire whiskey before it's all gone. Oh, and oh no, High we're about West to loop. Stops making all of it. Oh yeah, I like this. We're about to loop. All right, and uh, oh, our drinking is not required, but it is recommendedoed. We made the whole song. That's pretty good. Wow, I feel. It. Now I'm just talking because maybe maybe this will be at the end of the. I don't know. Oh, you're still talking. Uh, oh, oh, you're still here. There's yeah. money on the nightstand. Sometimes stand. I just like put things at the end. Or sometimes There's I just like fade off. So I like, can. You know, depends how I feel. About you're just gonna fade away, just like a slurs. <laughs> <laughs>